So everybody, welcome to this week's edition of In the Artist Studio. Uh, really happy to be joined with Adrian Octavius Walker. Um, I'm going to go into some announcements first, like I said, and then we'll get into this conversation today. So Maud's Milk Building may be closed due to the mandatory shelter in place. We'll be opening soon. Look for our announcements on our website. Um, we wanted to make sure that while we're closed, you can still get your fill of art and artists of the African diaspora. So each Wednesday at 1 o'clock PM Pacific Standard Time, join Moad staff members as we visit some of our favorite artists in their studios to see what they're currently working on and how their work is changing as a result of the quarantine. It's a rare opportunity to hear directly from artists in their studios. And we follow each of the talks with an audience Q&A. So if you're joining us on Zoom, please put your questions in the Q&A panel as we go along. If you're on Facebook, put your, um, your questions in the chat and we'll be sure to get to those as well. You can also go back and watch all of our past talks on Moad's YouTube channel, as well as on Facebook. The series was made possible by generous donations by the Westridge Foundation. Art Bridges Foundation, MOAD members and viewers like all of you, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. So a few, a few housekeeping items. MOAD stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Tony McDade, and Breonna Taylor, whose death still sits especially heavy on our hearts following the recent verdict. We. Uh, we also mourn all of the lives that have been lost at the hands of police brutality and racial injustice, including those whose names we do not know. Maud also stands united with the global movement to end SARS in Nigeria. And for if you are not familiar with SARS, it's the special anti-robbery squad. Land acknowledgement um, also. So as many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcefully brought to this continent, our institutions were founded upon exclusions and erasures of the indigenous people whose lands we are located on. It's with deep respect that Moad acknowledges that even within the virtual space, our people, our work, and our network servers are on native lands, and we thank the indigenous peoples of the Bay Area who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. My guest today is Adrian Octavius Walker, who is a mixed media artist based in Chicago, Illinois, by way of St. Louis, Missouri. His work is inspired by the Black body, dynamics of the Black family, and archival work related to the African American experience and the untold stories they share. Working in both film and digital format photography, Walker creates penetrating portraits influenced by his deep awareness of the nuances that pervade the human experience. His greatest milestone to date is being one of the prize winning artists in the Outwin 2019 American Portraiture Today competition on display at the National Portrait Gallery Smithsonian in Washington, DC. Walker is represented by Part Two Gallery in Oakland, California. You can find him curating artist talks and creating dynamic installation work. He enjoys collecting photo books, some commercial photography and discovering art artists on the web. Give him a shout out on Instagram at a Octavius W um, on Instagram, and we'll also drop that into the chat. Welcome, Adrian. How you doing today? I'm good. How you doing? You know, I mean, I, I didn't want to really go into it and talk yeah, about it, we, but we, I mean, we won't. We 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 know what it is. We 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 know what it is, especially yeah. on on this day. And yeah, I, I want to focus on you and your art. And uh, I understand actually that you're in Chicago. You're you're not yeah, you're not in we, Oakland we, anymore. Yeah, we moved back in December, December twenty third. So it's creepy. It's the anniversary of the move. Okay, and, and and what sparked that move to Chicago? Lost you. You muted. You muted. Oh oh, you lost me. You can't hear me. You, you still can't hear me? No, I can't. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering what, what, what sparked that move to Chicago? Yeah, so I worked at Visco for about five and a half years and we had opened up an office out here in Chicago. Uh, Visco, so we was doing like this program, uh, basically gearing up to like, get the new office cracking and all that good stuff. But our good friend COVID came and took that away <laughs> so they uh let go of like the whole marketing team and i was a, a part of the marketing team 
And uh, it was bittersweet, but we're, we're here. You know what I'm saying? We're close to family. Chicago is a really dope city. Yeah, uh, I love Chicago. She, you know, we got a house and all the good stuff. We have space. I have this nice attic office, gallery, whatever you want to call it in here. So, uh, yeah, it worked out. You know what I'm saying? I've been freelancing ever since. And the, the freelance work kicked off really, really, like, crazy. Uh, so it's like a blessing in disguise, you know what I'm saying, to be amongst like my peers of arts in the art world and like really being able to crack down into the arts, uh, doing different projects, stuff like this, um, different artist talks. I probably had like, I probably had like more artist talks this year I've ever had in my life, like all nice. together. Um, but it's been really, really good, you know what I'm saying, like to like really just like talk about art, you know, so. That's yeah, yeah that's, the, that's that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Um, you're originally from St. Louis, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, born and raised yeah. in St. Louis, so it's like four okay. and a half hours away from Chicago. Oh, nice, nice. So yeah, to to get back home is you know yeah. a car ride right away. That's right. We just came back from St. Louis yesterday. I had an opening um, this past weekend at this hotel called the On God Hotel. Um, so it's like the first, mm, it's like the first live show I had since the show that I was I had we matter back in Oakland in part two back in May I mean March that was like my last flight that I had took mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was in Oakland the day of the day before the show I was just like we can't do this like yeah this, yeah this, shit, <laughs> this shouldn't happen and I flew back home the next day and um it, it was up for a while then people started we started doing like um like the little openings and stuff like that, like having like a select will select people go in and check it out and stuff like that. You know how like it is now. Still trying to get used to that or whatever. Art art right now is in a really, really for me personally, is in a really weird space because I'm a people person. So it's not mm. really be able to like have like an art show and like, you know, that means hugging, that means talking right right here in somebody's face. That means you know, we didn't really exactly. have, a, we didn't really have like a, you know how I was at the openings of the Moad shows, like <laughs> at the bottom of the first floor, the first floor be cracking, you know what I'm saying? We got food, people walk around with food and we grabbing the hors d'oeuvres and drinking the wine and we going upstairs <laughs> to listen to the talks. I, I remember like it was yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Like at the Moad, so it just sucks right now it's just really really weird and um like i don't want to really dwell on like the covid stuff it's mostly like just dwelling on the fact that like missing that that part of like the artistry you know what i'm saying so it's just it's just like it's just a weird thing it's just a weird thing i i, I hear you and I'm, i mean i think also for you your work involves people and you know and i've 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 been doing I, I knew your work, but you know, over this last few days, I've been really researching you. And in you know, multiple occasions, I've heard you talk about how your work is really um, a collaboration with your subject. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's 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 just as much about what your subject matter um, or or the person who's your who's your subject. Um, what what they choose or what they're thinking about and what they're feeling. So you know, I'm I'm just. How, how has how has the production of your work changed now that you know you have to be six feet apart from people or or, or more? Yeah. It's it's crazy, honestly, because like I've been getting a lot of work as far as um, I have a lot of friends that's in the music out here, so I've done a lot of things with like music and with their works and like working with them. And these are folks that I've been like around, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like a few. A few times or here and there like actually hanging with so when it comes down to the rules of COVID and stuff like that we still be respectful with, with each other and wear masks but at the same time we've been like really around each other so it's kind of like been around family a little bit mm -hmm. um I've been getting a lot of corporate jobs so it's just like not used to being stuck up the nose every day every week you know what I'm saying to get tested and having all these different like rules and like I have to actually take a COVID um, training class for a potential hmm. job that I probably have coming up uh, with Wall Street Journal and it's just kind of like it's just crazy like all like you know there's literally like COVID 
packages or COVID, like, uh, what is it, uh, like a fee, like it's oh. in, like for certain jobs, it's like a hazards fee is what they call oh, it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they send you like, I mean, they, they send you like a package. So it's like, you got the N95 mask? And so I like get like a whole thing of like masks sent to me all the time and stuff like that. And I have like a billion masks from like just all over the place, you know? And then it's also when I make it up my own contracts and stuff like that, you know, you have to add that stuff in there about COVID and everything is just different, you know? So it's just more work. It's more work. Versus is like, you already going into a space that you kind of like have like slight anxiety over the job already because you have to do the job. But now you got to think about doing a job and potentially catching COVID. <laughs> so it's just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> crazy, you know? I, and, and I'm sure, I mean, I've, I've seen the photos on Instagram of your of your beautiful daughter, Emery, which, which we're yeah. seeing on the necklace you're wearing. Also, so I'm sure that is even heightened for you having having and, right. and i'm not going to yeah. show a picture people could check but she's beautiful um thank you yeah even that you know what i'm saying i was just in st louis visiting some friends and family over the time i had like uh some work going up and it was just, like weird visiting a good friend of mine and not being able to like really embrace the kids because he had a new baby you know and it's just like it's just wild you know and i was actually supposed to be in a bay uh la then go to the bay this week actually oh. um, but i just canceled that because i was just like i'm not really ready mentally to fly and also it's like kind of like thinking about like uh the talk or thinking about like the flight itself and the thinking about the election and all that it was just too much it was way yeah too, yeah way <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's 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 probably a good call right now because you know we'll, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days, but right. you know it's 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 going to be an interesting time. It's um, before, yeah, before we get into your work, um, I'm I've, I'm really interested in you know what was your route to becoming? Um, your, I, I know that you make your your living um, in so many different avenues. You know, it's not just being a fine artist. But we're here to talk about your art today. So, you know, what was your path towards being a fine artist? Um, yeah. um, I didn't even think, you know, what's crazy. Like, I, I didn't even like know I was getting myself into fine art until I was just like actually in it and doing it and not just like, just taking photos for money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you're kind of like investigating like the different options of what is it like to be in a, a gallery? What is it like to be in a museum? And last year, it was like this whole, like, I just manifested a lot. A good friend of mine, Holly Merchantson, helped me out so much, like, in my career as an artist while working full time uh, in tech. Because, you know, I'll be honest, I never took off full time from being an artist as mm. much as I was doing as uh, a full time worker in tech, I was still doing full-time working in photography, art, and stuff like that. So a lot of my accolades came up through my lifespan of an artist while I was working in tech. That's, um, let's see, the Paris Photo Book Awards. I was, uh, mm -hmm. I was shortlisted for that, for my book, My Lens Out Ferguson, which is a part of the deck that's here. Um, so I went out to Paris for that. That was back in 2015. Um, let's see, uh, the Outway and joint, you know, in Washington, DC at the Smithsonian. And then that same year with you all, I had work. So I had work in two museums at the same time, both of them Smithsonian institutions. That was kind mm -hmm. of crazy to really, really think about that last year, you know, and just never taking off as far as being an artist and always just kind of like strategically playing my cards right. Also having those doubts, you know what I'm saying? As an artist, <laughs> and kind of like dwelling on what if, the what ifs, the what nots and all that good stuff. And then just actually just sucking up and just going with the flow of things, you know what I'm saying? Letting everything just kind of be as they are and happen. And that's pretty much like kind of where I am now. And even to think about, like you said, the first question, like being into fine art, I had no idea 
it was just I knew how I wanted my stuff to be presented and look looked mm. at, and I knew where I wanted it to be placed. So just kind of like, like really taking the time out, looking into different art callings and stuff like that, paying the cost to be in them, not being in them, not being upset about that. Just kind of mm. like just pushing myself to be a part of so many things at once that I'll forget what I applied for at times. <laughs> I forgot. And just having that budget there to do so, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like always just like not, it's, it's just crazy. It's like I would literally probably go broke to make a piece how I want it to look versus just throwing up something just because. Mm. So, so really you're investing not only the time, but you're investing your own financial resources and right. to this, this right. vision of being a, a fine artist. What, what, what led you to photography though? You know, there's, there's, was it, it was it something that you had just been doing all along and then, you know, ex explored that avenue or yeah, how did I, that come about? I talk about this all the time. It's just mostly my curiosity as a child and as an individual where I was at, uh, growing up in North St. Louis and just kind of like want to document where I was at and who I was around my peers and what was going on around around me and then like not being able to like always just like I'm a, I am more of a verbal person but like as a visual person it's just like the way I describe things I always want you to see it touch it mm. smell it be a part of that experience so that's what really made me gravitate towards the camera because you can literally take a shot of whatever that is. And, you know, now you can really interpret like what you actually saw, when you saw it, how you saw it. And then it's kind of like showing this individual what you're talking about. Mm. First, cause you know, like where I'm from, I saw a lot of stuff growing up. Um, and I said like, people won't believe me, but at the same time, it's like where I grew up at in the life that I have now, people wouldn't even like, you know, you grew up there? Are you from there? And like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people just don't necessarily believe it. Even at the high school I talked about where I'm from, you know, with what high school I went to, mm -hmm. you know, people, when they find that out who don't know me, they just kind of like always shocked. But uh, that's pretty much what led me there in that space. It's just it's like my surroundings, curiosity, and uh, just want to tell stories in those type of ways, visual stories. No, 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 I, I dabbled in some black and white photography back in the day. So, I mean, I'm just seeing some evidence behind your head right now where I'm, I'm seeing sheets of film and I see a contact sheet. So, you know, are, are you, are you, do you primarily shoot in film or um, yeah, I do you go back to film? I primarily shoot in film. I shoot uh, medium format. Uh, wow. These, uh, what you see behind me, I went to my, I was at my dad's house over the weekend and I was going through all my old stuff and I came across like my first batch of like negatives and contact sheets and my first prints that I made. This is like 10 years ago. And it was just kind of like a nostalgic feeling and like a very like emotional feeling to like come across this work and then just like see where I am now. So I just kind of want to have it on display as I was talking to you all. And also kind of like want to leave it there because um, now like I'm in the midst of like building out like a dark room downstairs in our basement. And also just kind of like diving back in that. I'm mostly into, like I said, medium format. So I don't really do a lot of 35. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just like, a, it feels good to go back and look at the past and see like where you were versus where you are now, but not forgetting about this this part of my career in my life. Cause I still think this is, I'm looking at this now. I'm like, damn, this is really, really good. Like good <laughs> prints. And I was just like, I did that, you know, that was 10 years ago when I was like actually making prints, developing my own film and doing it like that. Now it's just like, I'm putting the trust in somebody else mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. develop my film and all that type of stuff. And now I'm printing like uh, more like, um, what are those like more like digital like like prints and stuff like that and like not in the dark room so I'm like more mm -hmm. I'm expanding my artistry and stuff like that and kind of uh just taking it I guess I want to go back like backtrack a little bit go back to where I was once before because I have friends that make prints all the time and stuff like that and 
also have dark rooms and stuff like that in their space. But I think I would be honest and say, I just got to like a little lazy with it. You know what I'm saying? I think honestly, it was just like, I can blame it on like actually making uh, a living, making money to mm -hmm. be able to produce these things the way I want to do it in a quicker way. And also like, just like thinking about my time having a kid run around and stuff like that. And just like, sure. I don't really have time to sit up and scan eight rolls of film. Um, here you go. I'm going <laughs> to pay you to do this for me then. I'll, you know, edit everything down as much as I can and do do that side or whatnot. So now it's kind of like, want to go back into the whole patient side of me. Mm. And also I want to blame that on like a lot of distractions now that I have too. Social media wasn't really popping like that back in college. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. So now it's just like in the midst of you have like this huge distraction where it's like you're walking people through the process or mm. you want to show off what you're doing and all that type of stuff. And it's like that that instant gratification feel, you know, it's just like you don't really need it, but it's just like there. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I hear you. I hear you. So 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 before I, I pull up this first image. Mm -hmm. Why, why analog? Why, you know, in, in, in this age? Because even 10 years ago, you could have gotten, you know, you could have purchased a relatively affordable digital camera and you could have gone that route. Mm -hmm. What what was your inspiration for, for going into this slow analog and even thinking about, you know, with film, you only have certain amounts of frames that you can fill on that roll right. and it's expensive. So, you know, you answered everything. I want to go slow. And the reason why I like I, I, I learned digital, which is cool, but at the mm -hmm. same time, once I learned film, I felt that I had more control over what was happening versus the whole digital thing. And I still mm -hmm. shoot digital here and there for certain things, but at the same time, when I'm shooting analog, it's just like a different feeling of like I'm in control 100% of the time. And yes. I'm taking my time and I'm being more and more careful with what I'm doing. You know, I had a job last week, me and my wife, uh, I was photographing and she did the set design with uh, MailChimp and we, I was photographing mainly, no, 100% analog inside of mm -hmm. a house that was not that well lit. We had to get like some lighting in the inside of the house and we was like, it took, it, basically I was honestly metering for like an hour versus just like going into the shot, you know, and once I got that film back, and that's another reason, when you get that film back, you're like, damn, I did that. Like, yeah, yeah. I really made this happen. And they all came out, you know, it's a reward, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like the reason why. And I, like I said, I do have a digital camera. I have a Canon Mark II, Mark II. And, you know, I've worked with that here and there for certain things, but at the same time, it's just like, it's no other feeling than like photographing with analog. And then I moved away from, um 35 because it's like that's a lot of shots i'm like damn yeah, it's, yeah. it'll take me forever to get through 35 mil versus 12 on a row or 16 or if i put like a 220 back inside of a 120 camera i get like 24 and it's mm. kind of like that feeling or whatnot so the feeling of I like it. how many i got how many i'm gonna have and stuff like that i think that's what it is and also like the cleaning process making sure you can dust out. It's all like a nostalgic thing, you know? It's like if you like really super good at cooking or whatever, you're gonna prep everything step by step. That's kind of how I am when it comes down to film. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I love, um, you're the, the second artist that I've spoken to in the last month that that is making that choice. Um, you talking about Erica Demon? Uh, well, oh, we, we actually had a conversation with Ed and Terry uh, a couple weeks ago um, and, and he does the same. Yeah, I thought you said about Erica Demon. I have a actually talking with Erica Demon later on. Oh, nice. Oh, we love her. Let me see. Let me get this thing into slideshow. There we go. Um, so yeah, I mean you you started you started talking about um Ferguson and you briefly mentioned um this this project. Uh so I definitely wanted to start off with this project and you know, definitely um acknowledging that that you are from Missouri also um and you know how how did this project come about yeah so i mean this is during an uprising uh the ferguson uh during ferguson uh rip mike brown 
and I was out photographing. You know, I honestly first when I first went out, I was just trying to see what was going on. So I didn't even think about like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out and start photographing. I'm going to make a book. None of this was in my mind to do uh, until I started like doing it. And I was photographing 90% of the photos and this book is with an iPhone 5, 5X. Mm. Um, even the cover, the cover is like an iPhone 5S. Around that time, nobody wanted anything pointed at them, especially a camera, you know, and then like think to think like a camera looks like a gun in this sense, you know what I'm saying? Because it's being pointed at you, you know, it's just kind of like, that's the feeling that I had personally. And so I just kind of took my time with it, just going around photographing as much as I can with my phone. Then I finally, you know, bossed up and brought my camera out a couple of days and got like a couple of shots with my uh, camera um, here and there. But it was just like one of those things where I didn't know what was going to come about. But what happened was um, I started to get like a lot of like uh, eyes on my work when I was posting it via like Instagram and Visco at the time. This is before I even worked at Visco. And uh, they were the first ones to see the images over at Visco pretty much and like they hit me up to do a interview, me and another friend of mine uh, by the name of Marcus Stabenow. And we both interviewed uh, with Visco about our images and like the time spent in Ferguson, Missouri. I'm from St. Louis, which is like Ferguson is like a county in St. Louis. So I'm a part mm -hmm. of like Missouri. And it's not far away. My college that I went to was like pretty much close to Ferguson, if not in Ferguson. Um, I have friends that live in Ferguson. I favorite restaurants over in Ferguson. So like to me, it's just like being a part of this community. Uh, it really obviously hit home. And this was years ago you know this happened 2014 no yeah 2014 mm -hmm. and so you know for something like this to happen in our city and then it's just kind of like continuously to happen like now it's pretty wild so taking these photographs being hit up by msnbc c csnbc all these different places fox news i didn't give them my photos didn't give them the rights to use them didn't give them that time of day to like try to put a narrative on top of my work. I wanted to be the voice and reason behind the work that I was photographing. So that's what I did. So I made this book called My Lens I Ferguson. Didn't know what I was doing at all. First time ever making a book, um, self-published. And um, my friend told me about the Photo Book Awards in Paris uh, at work. This is when I started working at Visco. And uh, she told me to apply and I kind of like sat on, I think it was like the last day before the submissions was like closing. And I, I sent it in being really, really nonchalant, not thinking that I was going to get chosen at all uh, because it was like one of those one in a million things, but I got hit, hit up as far as like being selected as a uh, shortlister for the Paris Photo Book Award. So I went out to Paris. Um, it was really beautiful. Uh, came nightfall. That's when a pair of the tags happened. Actually. Oh my goodness! Night. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. What? Yep. So I was there during that time, and it's crazy to meet so many people uh, in my career, my life, that were there at the same time as well. I didn't know them then, but then like meeting them in the bay, like I met like a few people in the bay that was actually out there. We shared our stories about what we were all doing at the time. Um, and a few of my friends, a few of my coworkers came with me to go to Paris to celebrate and stuff like that. So shout out to them at that time, but we were not expecting that night to happen the way it did. So for sure, man, you've been in lots of places at, I don't know, at special times. <laughs> yeah, I have. Even when I was, uh, when I first got my job with uh, Visco, I was out in Colorado Springs, the incident happened out in Colorado Springs, where this guy was like walking up and down the street, just shooting people mm -hmm. i wasn't there though uh thank god but yeah, it was just yeah, like sure. wild to for something like that to happen like being in these places and spaces when militia is happening around us you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's pretty wild and uh 
so so the next project that I have up is Black Rank. And um, I mean, I, I don't even feel like we have to say too much ab ab about at least this image. I'm going to focus on a, a couple of the portraits in here. Um, okay. But I, I, I do think, you know, how did this project come come about and, you know, the use of the of the the, the checker of the chessboard, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, we, we, we can we can already get so much from this image because I, I think of, of how you laid it out. But I definitely want to hear about, you know, I, I yeah. want to hear about yeah. how this project came about and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the context for it, for sure. For sure. So this project was, uh, so this is in St. Louis, Missouri at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, okay, okay. World Chess Hall of Fame has shows every year and they bring in local talent, local artists to be a part of the show that features probably like one big, big theme or something like that. And it's always like a theme. Uh, so this theme right here, um, for me, what show was this? Cause I was a part of two shows. I was a part of like a hip hop chess show. And I was a part of, uh, then it was, it was this one. I forget the whole theme, but basically I did like a lot of research on chess cause I do not play chess whatsoever. Um, I wish I did, um, but I, went and I was researching and I came across this move called back rank. And the back rank move is when, I'm gonna butcher the hell out of this, so forgive me. I believe it's like when the, the queen can make like a sudden move that basically like just kind of wipes off the whole chessboard. And so huh. the images you see here, so Pfizer, I just saw somebody say that's their girl. Pfizer is a good friend of mine as well. Shout out to Pfizer in Paris, um, a really good friend of me and my wife. But Pfizer plays the king. Emeka, the guy with the hand on his chest, he plays the queen. Junebug, an artist in the bay, he plays the bishop. Uh, Ashley uh, plays the knight. Ace, another artist, and Ashley is in the bay too. And Emeka's in the Bay, everybody's in the Bay except me. Well, and Pfizer. Ace in the corner here at the bottom with the hat on, he plays the bishop and I play the pawn. So each mm. character in this set plays a person in my family unit who I feel like that is that person. So the reason why I reverse the king and queen narrative because on a chess board, you know, the most dominant piece looked at is like the king because it's the mm. king, you know? So it's just like in my family unit, I looked at my mom as the king, you know what I'm saying? Cause she took care of the house. She held everything down. My dad was always around, but it's kind of like looking up to the king, which I looked at my mom as the king. Mm. And that's so why I reversed those two. And I played the pawn. If you was to zoom in on this photo or if I see it up close, I'm crying in the photo because the pawn is typically the chess piece that um, basically sacrifices itself for everybody else to move ahead. And so that's why I was like crying in this photo because it's kind of like I look at myself as that person, like even in like friend groups and stuff like that, just kind of like just want to like give the other person the leg up versus like me, cause I feel like I'm gonna be okay regardless of the situation or whatnot, but it's kind of like giving my last or giving somebody something and just kind of like falling off and I'll catch up type vibes. That's like the role that I play. And then the same thing for everybody else, the reason why they're these particular mm. characters on a piece is kind of like that's a couple of them or whatnot. This thing doesn't want to do that, but yeah, I'll show a couple of them, uh, of them closer. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's then like one of my favorite favorite things I've done. You know what sucks about this though? I can't find any negatives. Oh no! Oh no! I gotta look. <laughs> I, gotta look. They, I know they're around, but I gotta I gotta search hard. But I cannot find them right now. I gotta find them. It's a it's a collector's edition. I mean, and and you know. I, I felt I felt like I don't have to say too much about you know they're they're all just in black, 
um, mm-hmm. and uh, this, you know, when when I when I first saw this image, of course, you know, I'm born and raised in Oakland. I'm in Oakland right now, so immediately Black Panther, you know, the Black Panther Party um, comes comes to my head immediately. Um, I don't know if that that's intentional. You know, um, Pfizer pulled it out on purpose, uh, for sure. And it was just kind of like that representation. It was just, it was just wild. It was just a wild. I photographed these. This is at Visco, actually. It was just like every photo because I like came out so crispy, you know, and um, the colors and everything. I think this is the first time I worked with my printer out mm. in Oakland too that I came across. So that relationship that we built many years ago, we've been vibing with each other ever since. I love it. I love it. And that, you know, that I think also the the background color, my my brain is really thinking on this because the 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 my docent program is is examining uh, historical photographs and black representation, you know, from the dawn of, of photography and just, you know, picking the right background color to highlight uh, melanated skin, you know, uh, you, you just do it so beautifully. And, um, you know, who are, who are your inspirations? Oh, I have so many. I mean, it's all women. Um, oh, wow. Latoya Ruby, uh, Latoya, um, Latoya Ruby Frazier, um, Carrie Mae Weems, um, who else? Deanna Lawson, of course. Um, whew. I guess you could say like some friends of mine, Erica Demon, my friend Kennedy Carter. Uh, I see I got some guys in there. My friend photo Dre Andre is really really good. Junebug him <laughs> on the photo, he's really good. He don't call himself a photographer, but he's really good. Um. But I would say those top three of the women, like Latoya Ruby Frazier, was like the way that she approaches her work and like just kind of like really getting in like really close and like just really taking like the intimacy from a photo, from a person, like you feel it every freaking time. And um, she has this uh, book called uh, uh, The Notion of, well, why am I butchering a book right now? Hold on, let me look it up. Let me look it up. It's gonna take a second. So, 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 someone <laughs> notion of family the notion of family um it's like amazing like this is amazing photo book i did like a book review on it on photo eye and all this type of stuff and just ever since like learning about her i kind of like just dove all the way into her practice and just like how and what she does and how she talks about her work and kind of just like being stuck in my head, you know, so those are like my biggest inspiration. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I've, I, I do this every time I was run over, um, but I'm gonna zip through a couple of them, including this one, because mm-hmm. I definitely, if I didn't cover We Matter, I mean, that would be yeah. a travesty. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's not something that, that, that I could pass okay. by. <laughs> so. Wow, no way. You got you got it up in the studio. And I definitely want to give some time for us to to see what you have in the studio as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, I would probably get in get into a lot of trouble if I didn't cover this extraordinary exhibition and these works. Um, and yeah, so let's just dive right into this work that was at the National Portrait Gallery. And is it the same one that you have behind you as well? Yeah, I was just sold actually. So I'm just like get, about to get ready and wrap it up and all that good stuff. So yeah, it's uh this work is insane. Really like took over like the whole photograph. It, I mean the whole my career as an artist and people still hit me up to like interview me about it. And I'm like just kind of like, do I say yes and continue this? <laughs> do I say no and try to move on? So I'm like battling with it, like constantly. It's kind of insane, but at the same time, it's just like uh, it's a uh, it's I don't I can't even describe the feeling because I just never thought that I would create work like this and it take me these different places and also it being like collaborative, like I said in the beginning. Like so, Michael, the guy that's in this photo, he's a homie of mine. Junebug was on set helping me out. 
a homie named Cameron was on set helping me out as well. My friend Paul, who's also a part of the series, the, the light, lighter skin guy that's in the other photos. It was just like a team effort, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like without them, this would have never happened the way it happened. And uh, it started off honestly just for some, a homie of mine back in California, in, uh, LA has a do-rag line called OG Royale. And I was photographing images for the do-rag line. And I was just like, man, these photos, like once I got them back, I was just like, they just can't live on Instagram and it just be that, you know? And I kind of mm-hmm. sat on them for a long time. So I worked with a homie, Ryan Austin Dennis. I helped, I worked with Ryan Austin and shout out to Ryan Austin. Um, who helped me like pretty much like craft some language behind like these images and basically he just interviewed me I actually set it up like can you interview me on how these (laughs) images make me feel and he's such a really good writer and like like uh, call him like a composer with words and stuff like that how he put stuff together like really helped me craft some language and then another friend of mine Ricky Bird who is like really like uh it's like a curator, fashionista, uh, professor, everything from St. Louis lives out here now. Also, like, help me edit down some stuff like that. And so it's just like, again, collaborating with these individuals. And if I don't say their names, then I'm out here just telling lies, you know? They probably mm-hmm. tired of me talking about their life. They was like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You did it all. I'm like, but no, they did. <laughs> And so anyways, it's just like really crafting that up and then like just come down to like this work. And then also like not to mention like the photos themselves just like speak so much volume. Obviously, mm-hmm. when you see this work, it kind of reminds you and gives you the vibe of like uh, John Edmonds, amazing photographer. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest, it's like when I saw his do right work, I was just like super impressed. And then it's just like, so it's just kind of like not really, I wasn't necessarily like thinking about his work when I was making my work because I didn't again I wasn't thinking about the fine art space and that's where he is he's in the fine art world Mm -hmm. and I would say I would say this work took me further into fine art I didn't take the work into fine art the work took me into fine art Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and it really like took me to the place because I was just like if I print these I have to print them big it's no way that I can make eight by tens, 11 by 14s, or nothing like that. Like I have to print these really big. So that's what I did. I took it there. I printed them big. I got them framed in really, really nice uh, like wood, like frames and stuff like that. And really nice glass on top of a couple of them. And I started experimenting with different ways of how I wanted it to look. And um, the rest is history. Just kind of like took it there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think especially with this photo and probably why, you know, as, as you said, it's the one that that no one will let you let go of <laughs> or, or, or really or really move past is is that, you know, the the way that the way that you presented this version of what black masculinity is, um, is not something that we see, um, you know, as as black people, we see this within ourselves all the time. But you, this isn't this isn't a version of masculinity that we see on our walls, let alone the National Portrait Gallery. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty it's, wild. It, like that right is, there, like that's insane to think about. Uh, somebody just asked the question, what size it was? This is a twenty-seven by forty. It's twenty-seven by forty inches. I can grab this one real quick. Mm-hmm. Is that cool? You want me to just grab it? Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, we can kind of do a little mix up, but <laughs> between the things. Um, that, that, that was from Kitsan. Kitsan is, I, I, I can see that on your wall. <laughs> I, I, um, so yeah, like even to think, let's see, can y'all see it? Yep, perfect. So like, I like to even think about like how I photograph these and like the showcase of like black masculinity and thinking about like the idea of how we really looked at, that's kind of like what took me to the whole narrative of us just looking like us, mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. our thing, being who we are every day, but being looked at differently 
based off of somebody else's logic or how they look at us as viewing us as a thug or a thief or a threat and stuff like that versus like we're literally just trying to take care of our damn hair. <laughs> <laughs> literally, just, right? literally just trying to wave the hair up, make it look good, you know what I'm saying, and just go out our business and that's, that's just it. It's just like that's pretty much like what it it wasn't really you know, I don't, I like, I like having like a narrative around my work, but sometimes I feel like a lot of work doesn't really have to have so much language around it because it's just like, this is like a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I photograph a lifestyle. That's what I looked at. I literally photographed a lifestyle. I photographed a man being who he is, gold chain on his neck, tattoos. You don't even know his story. But if I tell you his story, you'd be like, oh shit. He served in the military. Oh shit. He's a model. That's what he does for a living. He models. Like he models. Like that's he get his bread and bread and butter from modeling. Mm -hmm. Like he just did a commercial for the brand Hems that the, the facial. Oh yeah, the hair. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And this is him. You know, he wouldn't hurt a fly. You know what I'm saying? Like lives in LA, living his best life. He works out every day. He's healthy. You know what I'm saying? He listens to really great music. But to this white man or white lady who don't know him, he looks like he'll harm her. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what the narrative was with that work, you know? Kind of like really soft, showing like that softness and stuff like that. And I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. Like I still, again, like a, a lot of times when I photograph stuff and make work, when I get it back, I'm like, damn, I can't believe this came out the way it did. Like, <laughs> really That's just, beautiful. Like, can't believe it. And then also can't believe the fact that people want to buy it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people own it. And people want it in their, in their homes and stuff like that. So it's just like, because, you know, art is hard. It's hard as hell to sell with. You know what I'm saying? I'm an artist, but I'm an artist that actually likes to buy work too. So I'm a mm -hmm. collector myself, you know? Um, I just bought a piece over the weekend, you know what I'm saying? And just kind of like being in that space and being able to do that. And I want to also encourage other artists to do so. I know it's hard, you know what I'm saying? But if you can, you know what I'm saying? Just just buy some homies work, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't be that artist just letting everybody buy your shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? I, I, I hear you. I, I, I find myself uh, starting a little collection here and there, and it, it could get pricey, but, you know. It can get pricey. It can get pricey. But you know what? Before it gets pricey, because I've, I've been in situations where I was like, damn, I can't do it. But then that mm -hmm. next year, I'm like, exactly. damn, I can't do I it. really can't do it. <laughs> you know? So it's just like, for me, I'm looking at it as like, I'm going to go ahead and do this while I got it. I'll make that back. You know, I'll make it back. It'll be fine. You know, um, I have this piece. This piece makes me more happier than like not having it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, and then also to think about the shit that we typically spend money on anyways, you know, mm, especially sure. now, we, we in the house. So I want to, <laughs> we ain't looking at nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Other than our damn phone. So it's just like, let's look at the wall. You know what I'm saying? Let's look what we have on the walls. So and like, let's make our house a house, you know what I'm saying? An apartment or apartment, whatever you want to, wherever you live, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like bring that peace to mm -hmm. where you are. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's pretty much what I do. So my yeah, art. Look, def like definitely art. living in it all the and way. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I wanted to, because because uh, I think you also took this exhibition to a whole other level right um, yeah so yeah it's, it's it's like one of those it's one of those peering in into our world and you know a very familiar scene and and products that um if you are african-american or or just black around the world if um, you know what this is you know exactly what this is you know what's in that cabinet you know everything right <laughs> crazy when I go over people house or like a family member not everybody house but I'm always <laughs> curious to see what the hell they got inside their cabinet you know what I'm saying what they use it and stuff like that I, I don't open it but I'd be wanting to I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? just to basically see if they have the same things that I have in mind you know what I'm saying so 
Um, I mean, you, you got yes, the can of you got the current can of Murray's in there. You got the you got the blue hair magic. I mean, <laughs> everything you know. So this so that this so few slides back, you saw the living room, mm. and the living room was the thing that really sparked me and being in this whole idea space of installation, but creating installation work that is meaningful to my life and meaningful to other black people's lives and stuff like that. And so I, I wanted to basically kind of like bring the people into my world. And I'm a person where if I go to a museum and I can't like really touch shit or be a part of something and like really you know, like, cause I have people like you can open it, you can open it up, you can look at it, you can smell the cologne, mm -hmm. the, on the on the joint the, that was Obama oil right there next to those earrings that was Obama oil that's what they call uh, it <laughs> um, like even if you was a zoom in I don't know if you can but like there's hair on the sink from the brush you know wow. what I'm saying? I really wanted to like like take it there you know what I'm saying and just like people be a part of this experience you know what I'm saying and like you could have tied a do rag on if you want and all that good stuff so I really wanted people to be a part of the space and. To go back to the other slide, I'm not not telling you to go back to the other slide, but think about that slide you saw in the living room. It's the same thing. My wife helped curate that. You know what I'm saying? Like we find like a space and, and we find things that fill in within these spaces that we lived in and stuff like that that we are part of. And my good friend Curtis helped me put this together. Like so we laid the floor down, put the wallpaper up, like we went to Home Depot and like bought all these like really like cheap bathroom wear and stuff like that and like made a bathroom you know what i'm saying and it's just like for me it's just like a lot of people like look at this as like throwaway money but for me it's just like an experience you know what i'm saying because it's just like why not you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like, if i I'm, I'm already like in my head of thinking like what the next thing i want to do and i'll tell you offline i can't tell it to everybody because you know Got some folks out there that snatch it, your idea from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> but uh, just thinking about like you know installation work and how I can live, and also this type of work right here, you know everybody can experience it. But now mm -hmm. the fact that you can't really go inside, you know, what I'm saying why you can't do this stuff outside. So being a part and like thinking about like in the future of me doing like installations outside in outside spaces outdoors, and people can be a part of it, you know, and um just taking it there, you know what I'm saying? Oh shit, Joe Biden just won Michigan, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we love that, we love that. Right. I mean, hey, it's, it's, it's part of our reality. <laughs> and energy. So, you know, really just kind of like, not just like, all right, I can photograph all day, what else can I do? You know what I'm mm. saying? Let's, let's build some stuff out, let's build out experiences, you know? And, um, so that's kind of like where I'm just like kind of take my energy and also a part of this, I think the next slide you had was the, uh, yeah. So yeah, the performance that I did. So this was at the Greens. The Greens is like a experimental hybrid space that so clothing, but also I had like art shows. And this is like when I first did We Matter. So the one, the slide before this, that was at part two. This was at the greens. And I also had like a bathroom in here, but it was smaller. But then this particular piece right here, it's like them acting out one of the pieces that I took, a photo that I took of the do-rags attached to each of their heads. And this performance was basically, it featured these guys sitting on, standing on the crates. And then the, the do-rags that are draping on the do rag that's connected to them were placed on by people in the audience. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, and I had like a um, playlist by a homie named Fred. He goes by DJ No Shirt. And uh, he created this playlist based on like the music that I was listening to or thinking about during the time of this work. So it went from like gospel, trap, hip hop, like all types and it was playing as people were placing the do-rags on top of the connected do-rags. So it's basically like this whole sense of togetherness and bringing everybody together. 
when using like this do rag. And I wanted to do this again in part two, but you know, things just fell apart. And <laughs> stuff, <so>. stuff happened. <laughs> so, so, someone also asked a question. I think from Facebook, um, asking about the do rags. So the do rags are the way that this project kind of came out was you were doing a photo shoot for a product line, right? Exactly. I was doing some product shoots. A product. It was product shots. Yeah. At mm. first, and then I was just like, I talked to the homies. I told them like how I was feeling. They are artists too. They understand, you know what I'm saying? Um, one of them is like, does bodybuilding and stuff like that. And uh, I told them about it and they just trust everything that I said. And just is like, it's, it's your world, you know what I'm saying? Go with mm. it. And, and how it, long were they standing there doing this? Uh, let's see. So I think they did like 15 straight minutes, but they we did like this thing and they would signal when they was tired and they would like, literally simultaneously get down like they would step down off like the top uh the top mm. crate go to the one and they sit they just sit down and still in unison or whatnot and then they'll signal that i'm okay i'm i'm good i can stand back up mm. and they'll stand back up and and the configuration of the milk crates now i, I i'm always looking for a. Uh, uh, a symbol or, or a connection within things. And so my mind immediately goes to 68 Olympics with this mm -hmm. because they're, they're, they're standing kind of, you know, in the first Dude, place I didn't, position. I, that's, that, thank you. I didn't think about <laughs> that. Uh, I literally, the milk crates are because of the other photos with my friend Paul sitting on them in the actual mm. photo. And I just took whatever I was using for the initial shoot and put it in here or whatnot. But, uh, Damn, I gotta steal it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it, it's. I mean, it's it's in your work. So <laughs> I, didn't, I uh, did not think about that. That's you know, another, I, that's I, another, I, I think there's another thing that I like when people look and talk about my work because they like see things that I don't, and mm. I I just take it with a grain of salt. But like, yeah, sure, you know, that's dope. It does make sense. It it is. You know, what I'm saying I'm glad you saw that because other people see your work differently. You know, so they find like mm -hmm. these different and see different references in the work, so, yeah. I love it. We have one more image and then we gotta go. Um, but, you know, again, this is one of those that if I didn't, uh, we just spoke to Basil two weeks ago, I wanna say. Um, so it's interesting to to revisit this piece. And this piece was on view at MOAD um, during the exhibition curated by Melanie and Melora Green. Um, mm -hmm. Was that a year ago at this point? <laughs> Yeah. I believe it was a year ago. I think so. Um, and and it's it's part of the series Mortal Man. Um, mm -hmm. And and I'm just I've always been interested. I've always wanted to talk to you about you know why Mortal Man? Why 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 that as as the title? Um, yeah. So this piece, you know, so Basil had an exhibition at a solo exhibition at Part Two Gallery. So he was in a bay. Um, so I met up with Basil. Basil was also from St. Louis. And what's funny is me and Basil never met while we were in mm -hmm. St. Louis. Together. And uh, so we started mostly talking once I like moved away and I was in a bay and like becoming the artist I am today. And then just like learning about his work. And he's just like so tapped in with his work, so tapped in with his body, so tapped in with his mind and his spirit. It's kind of like, wanting to like photograph that all in one and then just honestly just hearing his photo talk um at part two really inspired this work and really took both of us there to like make these happen and you know basil does a lot with his hands he has really really beautiful hands but his hands are also like it's like masculine like vibe but then you also see the nails painted, you know, but you also see the flaws in his nails with the skin, you know what I'm saying? Like not everything is like really intact, but he uses his hands. So that's mm -hmm. what the focus, and this piece is called Pushing Through. Uh, the entire series and body of work is called Mortal Man based off of Kendrick Lamar, uh, a song by him called Mortal Man. And that song in particular talked a lot about survivor's guilt and also to think about Basil's piece and Basil's work. This work is called um, this work is called Shaman's Death. And to think mm -hmm. about like Basil's artist talk and the pieces that he had in the show 
every piece that he sews together comes from a different soul, a soul of a person that he knows, a soul of a person that he doesn't know. He goes dumpster diving to find different fabrics and quilts and t-shirts and whatever to make these quilts. So it's all coming from a different body. And basically he's putting these bodies together and creating like a new life. And so I was thinking about like that in a sense of thinking about mortal man in a sense of Kendrick Lamar and that song and what it was talking about versus what Basil was talking about his art show and kind of like put two and two together. That's kind of how this body of work came about. It was literally based off a song. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I, lo I love that context and I love how you're thinking and I love how the, you know, the, the, the titles just for you just come up. <laughs> so, something that you're thinking, something that you're doing. Um, I, yeah, I was also reading about the Virgin Mary piece and how you're like, second I saw it, first thing that came to my head. So I oh, am yeah. um, 100%. Yep. And, and we, we kind of, we're kind of like at the end of, of our time together. I didn't see any questions come through the Q&A that we didn't address in the chat. Um, so I just want to know, like, can you tell folks what's, what's next for you? Would you have new residencies, yeah. exhibitions? Um, what's, what's happening? So I just had a show open in St. Louis with featuring the work pushing through, but it's called, I, I, I tweaked that piece. Uh, and I made it like I, I, it's huge. It's actually ten feet by eight inches. It's, it's humongous. And um, right now, that work is on display at the Angar Hotel in St. Louis. Uh, the piece from the Smithsonian of the Black Virgin Mary from the Weed Matter is on tour right now. It's in um, it's in Massachusetts right now, then it's going to tour to St. Louis and Washington University um, in 2021. Um, I think I have some work coming up that's gonna be in part two in spring. Right now, I'm just taking the time out and photographing on the north side of St. Louis and East St. Louis. And so I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna make another book soon. So I've been photographing a lot. Um, and right now I'm just working on a bunch of different projects with. Google, um, potential stuff with Apple and just stuff like that, just keeping that stuff popping and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, I'm just just taking photos and making work and just seeing where it goes from there. That's awesome. It sounds like you have a lot going on. And, yeah. and, and folks, how, how can folks find out when they can see all of these? Yeah, so I have a newsletter that folks can sign up on. Um, you can go click on my bio on my Instagram and then you'll see my uh, link tree. So just click through my link tree, find the sign up on my, on my newsletter. It's called AOW News. Um, or just follow me on Instagram. That's always that's the best way to find what's going on in my life. See Emory, see what me and my wife is working on, see what music I'm listening to. Um, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, this has been really wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I love talking to you. And of course, as always, uh, I definitely could have talked to you for a lot longer. But I think I'll see you in just, in just a minute. I'll be in a bay, um, hopefully in February. So we can probably get something else going on. But definitely, I appreciate everybody who tapped in. I know today has been a very, very strange day. These past two days, hell, this year. So I just want <laughs> everybody out there to like, just keep your head up as high as you can. You know what I'm saying? Drink a lot of water, uh, get some sleep if you can. I know we're all artists out there, so it's hard for us to do that. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I, I'm, this, is, this is food for the soul for everybody. Everybody needed this break. Yeah. So, yeah, that thank you everybody for joining us. This talk will be on Moad's Facebook as soon as we end. Um, if you came in late and you want to start all over, you can immediately see that. And it will also be archived on Museum of the African Diaspora on our YouTube page uh, by Friday. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next week. See you later. All right, Adrian, take care. Good job.